You just finished with the Raiders. Mm -hmm. You were a top 100 player last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you went through a, a very high and low offseason. More, more lows than high. Yeah. <laughs> more lows talk, than high. Talk about that, because you, you were with Seattle for a decade. Yeah. And uh, again, a top 100 player. Yeah. I think you finally got your flowers because I think you've been... Should have been at it. Right. I should have been at it. Yeah, you've been somebody... Uh, with Bobby, you've had Bobby there, and obviously everybody knows about Bobby mm -hmm. Wagner. He's been like an all pro every mm -hmm. year. But you're somebody like us watching the tape. You're somebody yeah. that's always, you're right there next to him. Yeah. But you never seem to get your flowers until this past year. Mm -hmm. Talk about, you know, talk about ending your decade in Seattle and why you're so frustrated this past all season. Yeah. So I put together a very, very, in my eyes, a ring of honor career. I just did, you know, got the Super Bowls, got the Pro Bowls. Almost got a thousand tackles in Seattle. I saw that, bro. I'm like seven, eight away. But anyway, um, so yeah, had to, just had a stellar career and um, cracked the top 100 for the first time, number 67. But if you look at that list, I'm the only guy that was a free agent. Right. So I'm like, how the hell did I put together this really good career? First of all, put together this really good year 10, and don't nobody want me. Because it also came out, you you were even injured in 19, and you bounced back. Y'all got hurt in 18, and, okay, I, had, okay. and I had two really good years. Back-to-back, -back, really good years. And then they drafted um, linebacker first round, and I was like, oh, shit. So yeah. you, you, you can, you can kind of yeah. see the writing on the wall. I never had anybody drafted first round in my position. But we all know when a guy gets drafted, your spot, something's about to happen. Either you're about to get benched, cut, or about to rotate in and out. And so I didn't, I didn't have um, any guarantees on that year. So if they were letting me go, I wouldn't have had no money. And um, so going to that, have a fantastic year 10 and free agency hit. And I'm like, oh, it's a freaking no-brainer. Like somebody's about to pick me up and I'm about to either come back to Seattle or a team just go want me. And when I tell you that my phone was dry, like I got zero phone calls. That's, are you for real? Zero. Seattle didn't call me. Cowboys, Rams, Niners, nobody, nobody called Nobody even inquired. No. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I'm like, I, you know, I, at first I just waited. And I'm, I hit my agent like, like what, is, what is going on? And he said, it's just the first wave. There's, there's nothing out there. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. But you should, like, you're somebody, and I understand the, the whole wave process, but you're somebody who I thought should I was be first in the first day. wave. I was, yeah. I, was like, I gotta be a first day dude. Like, what are they looking at? What are they thinking? And um, bro, when I said that's like the top three, like lowest I've ever been in like my NFL career, like the sadness and the stress and the anxiety that I had was like, I nothing, nothing could describe it. How are you dealing with it? Man, well, well, thank God I got, um, you know, married, wife, wife, three kids. And so I have, you know, I have my family, I have my family, I have my support system. I was training with the fellas, going to Tracy Ford and, um, and Bellevue, Washington, just staying around people. And um, I was in my word. I was praying and, and meditating daily because if I didn't have that, I would have lost my freaking mind. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and bro, it's just just went through the first wave. You know, other teams like wait till the draft that went by. OTAs went by, training camp went by, and, and it was nothing. Were the Raiders the first one? To call me? Yeah. No, the, um, the Niners were the first to call me. Um, it's funny, uh, John Lynch called me. He's like, KJ, what's up, man? I see you're still a free agent. I was like, yeah, you, you know this? <laughs> and um, he was like, man, we, we'd love to get you out here. We'd love to get you out here, man. You know, we've always watched you. We thought it was a no-brainer that you were signed with Seattle. That's what he said. And I was like, yeah, you know, that, that didn't happen. And so, um, yeah, man, want to come, you know, come out here and get a visit in. And that went by. And so... You went out and visited? I never visited. I never visited. He just mentioned it, but they he didn't follow it. up. With He's like, I'm going to talk to Shanahan. And it's Shanahan, you know, they said Shanahan's on board. And um, long story short, um, vet minimum was offered. <sighs> Disrespectful, and I'm like, there's no way that KJ Wright name would be signed next to a vet minimum contract. I put together too good of a resume to do that. You know, I just, I just retire, live off, live off the money that I made, and um, that didn't fall through. And then Gus Bradley calls me when I was sitting on the deck. Gus Bradley, defensive coordinator for the uh, the Raiders, he comes like, KJ, what's up? 
It's like, what up, Gus? No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm free as a bird. And um, Gus, you know, flew me out there for a visit, visit with the Raiders. And um, yeah, signed a few weeks later. What did you think about the opportunity you were presented with the, Ra- with the Raiders? Because Denzel had just gotten traded out there, right? Yeah. So going out there knowing that they kind of had a little bit of a depth chart put together, what was your... I was confused why the Raiders was calling me. I was like, why do the Raiders want me? They got Denzel... Uh, got Corey Littleton, Nick, 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 uh, Kwiatkowski, yeah. And um, I was like, why do they want me? But um, Nick Morrow had got hurt. Right. I didn't realize Nick got hurt. Nick got hurt, and Jaden was hurt. And so it was an auto position that was open for me. And Gus called me. He's like, hey, we got a spot open for you. What you think? You know, you won't be an every down backer. And I was like, and so um, yeah, I just I, at that point I just wanted to get in the camp because it was week one of the regular season. You got to get on week one because once you... Yeah, your salary's guaranteed. Your salary's guaranteed. And, um, you know, I missed all the training camp, you know, all the OTAs. And I just signed week one and I played in like six days against the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> <The> crazy, <laughs> Fortunately, crazy. he's got that cover three system. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, you can pick up on. But you also posted that video in training camp where you you took to Twitter and you you shot a video. What made you want to shoot that video? Man, just um, the one you had retweeted? Yeah. I just I just wanted to let the world know, like, in the midst of, like, my adversity, in the midst of my sadness, like, no matter what anyone is going through in this world, it's important that through it all you stay positive. And it's important that you don't let your spirits get, get so down. And so in the midst of what I was going through, I was still working my ass off. I was still preparing. I was still watching film because I knew that something was going to fall through. And so I could have been in my feelings just eating like shit and, and not training and and all that stuff, but I, but I prepared, like, I'll be a week one starter. So I just wanted to just put that out there and let people know, like, no matter what you're going through, just keep working. You know, yeah. then you had, you know, you had retweeted and it got, it, you know, it spread a little more. And so I appreciate that. Well, I mean, you're KJ, right. I think everybody in Seattle was pretty curious. Like, I'm sure you posted something like that because you heard and was seeing a lot of people kind of questioning what was happening. And you yeah. wanted to do that on your own because there's, I mean, there's, I mean, sure, I guess maybe a few more people saw it, but I mean, everybody was so curious as to why you hadn't been signed. Yeah. Because Pete Carroll, he was doing uh, press conferences and stuff saying like, oh, I think he was, <laughs> he was alluding to that you guys were in conversation and the door is still open. Yeah. It doesn't sound like that was true at all. Um, He said the door was still open. It's like, KJ, love to have you back. You know it's a big negotiating chess game. Yeah, but but the the only way that I would have came back was if the guys if their if their plan didn't work, right? Because they went to a new scheme, they want to put new people in there. He's like, no, it's essentially the only way you're coming back is if this plan doesn't look good, right? Because there were hang on, there were a couple of young guys that they had drafted by now, right? There's yeah. that first rounder, and then there was another guy, right? Second rounder, a second rounder. Yeah, so they're they're planning for, you know. You and Wag, so like at some point, these guys, like, yeah, it's gonna start to decline. We gotta yeah. prepare for the future, yeah. And so, I just had this little glimpse of hope. And, um, and, um, when it came down to it, when it came, when it came down to sign with the Raiders, I called Pete. I said, Pete, I got this offer on the table. I really don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. I want to stay in Seattle. Is there anything we could do? I'll take a lesser role. I understand you want to play Jordan. I'll come off the field. What can, what yeah. can we do so I stay in Seattle? Because you're embedded in Seattle. You want, you want to be there. Yeah. And um, he's like, God, oh, KJ. You know, Pete, you know, he's just like, God, oh, KJ, this, this, I hate this. Let me, um, let me talk to John, uh, the GM, and let's see if we can get something done. Yeah. Would you have signed? Would you have played for vet? Would you have signed vet minimum? At that point? At that point to stay in Seattle, knowing that the Raiders had just offered you a contract. When you call Pete and you're like, hey, I'll do this. I'll do this. Um, no, I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have? I wouldn't have. They would have had to compete a little yeah, bit? If the Raiders offered me vet minimum and the Seahawks offered me vet minimum, I would have left. You would have left Seattle? Yeah. On both vet minimum? Yeah. Why is that? Because my because my pride, my ego. But the Raiders had offered you and you called Pete and said, hey, man, they offer, what did the Raiders offer you? It was like, five, was it five million? It got up to five. Uh, up to five. Up to five. So the Raiders offer you up to five. You, you choose to call Pete and say, is there anything we can do? Uh-huh. But what are you looking for when you say is there anything? We, are you looking for the higher than the five, or you wouldn't have? If they offered you a one for five, you wouldn't have stayed oh, in five, Seattle. If they offered me five, I would, I would have, I would have stayed in Seattle. But why, if they're both vet minimum, would you have left Seattle if they're both the same? Because first of all, yeah. both offers are dog shit. 
But, <laughs> but I, I would have. I love it, dude. We got an elite linebacker yeah. on this motherfucker. He's just like. But I would have had to leave because my ego would have been like, KJ, first of all, what you're going to give Seattle is, miraculously, you're going to be on the field a lot. And the, the leadership that I bring in that locker room, the presence that I bring, they would have gotten millions out of me. And so I'm not going to give this organization um, another year of this. I'd rather just leave and start over and bless another, with another organization what I bring to the table. So to hell with coming back for vet minimum. I just leave and go do it somewhere else. I got you. And so, yeah. Do you feel, you're obviously uh, very passionate. I fucking love it. It's juicing me <laughs> up right now, dude. Um, do you feel like, uh, uh, you feel established enough Obviously, to to say those things, but you also know this, knowing how many of your teammates have your, had your back, because Bobby was out there probably every yeah. week, yeah. saying something. You get allude to the same passion that he had, like you're you're shining like through him. Yeah. Uh, do you feel kind of that respect with all your teammates that you have in Seattle? I feel complete respect for my teammates, complete respect from the fans, and um, everybody had my back. Like I literally got tweeted every day from fans. Why isn't KJ signed? They would tag the Seahawks, time KJ. At, at Pete Carroll, what are we doing here? Why isn't KJ signed? Bring him back. And um, that was literally all off season. And so I felt that love from, from the people because I gave the city everything I had. Yeah. I gave these people every ounce in my body. And some stuff just doesn't make sense. Like what? Organizational, organization wise. Like, how and why do you let me leave the building when I'm willing to, 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 to take a lesser role when I'm willing to still give you all that I got. Like, why? Right. It don't make sense to me, and especially when I extend the olive branch and, and saying, can we work something out? I hope you guys like this clip. If you want to continue to be for the boys, you need to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, and check out our playlist. We have all the links right here on the screen. As always, biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses. Also, go check out the full episodes, but always for the boys.